Howdy everyone and welcome back to The More You Grow. I'm coming at you today with an episode to talk about one of my favorite fall time crops of all time. It is called Roselle. In Australia they'll call it Rosella. Some other countries call it Sorrel. But I'm going to talk about what Roselle is today, why it's one of my favorite crops, what you can use it for, and how you can grow some in your garden next year. So let's get into it and let's go check it out. So to start off with, Roselle is a member of the hibiscus family. And you'll look at the flowers and you can really see that resemblance to a hibiscus that we grow for ornamental purposes. This is considered hibiscus subdurifera, the scientific name I believe. I'll leave it here on the screen. And we can grow these for the flowers. They have beautiful ochre-like flowers to me. They look like ochre flowers for anyone that's familiar with those. And I think they're quite beautiful. But we don't just grow them for the flowers like we do ornamentals. They are very ornamental in themselves and they make a lovely addition to your landscape. But the main thing I grow them for and what most people grow them for are these fruits here. This looks like a flower bud, but this is actually the fruit of the roselle because this red part is actually considered to be a calyx, which is something that if you look at roses, it's the kind of green petal leaves that you see on the bottom of the rose, that would be a calyx there. But these calyxes form over the fruit. I'll peel this apart in a minute to show you the fruit inside. But what we're mainly wanting to harvest these for are these red calyxes. That is what we want to harvest them for. And you may be wondering, what does one even want to grow um, Roselle for. So let me talk about some of the things that you can grow this for and the products that we can make from this that I will actually try to show you some of here on a video. So let's talk about that real quick. So at this point in the video you may be wondering what do we grow Roselle for and what does it taste like? Well I can tell you what I grow Roselle for the most and that is making some of the best jam in the world. I use these calyces on the outside of the fruit and that makes just an awesome jam. It has very much a strawberry like flavor mixed with kind of cranberry tartness and it's just absolutely tasty guys. It makes so much jam because of how prolific the plants are and you may be wondering what you make the jam from. It's actually the red calyces on the outside. If I peel some of these, let me see here, if I peel this you get a nice fleshy calyx like this from the fruit. The fruit inside kind of looks like a green stubby okra and that's really what it looks like in all ways. It looks like an okra because they're really closely related. And just to give you a live taste test of the raw calyx, it's really crisp, crunchy. It has a sourness, a cranberry like tartness but when you combine that with some sugar, it evens out and it's absolutely delicious. And it's very, it's very cranberry-like is the way I would describe it. So you can use this to make jam. You can make awesome hibiscus refreshers and teas with this that are really, really delicious when you mix those together. I'll try to do those on a video soon if I can. And they are really good for making like syrups, things like that. You make syrups with them for pancakes. I'm actually going to do a video with Morgan on how we make our Roselle jam that we've made lots of so far and kind of show you how we make that and it'll give you a chance to kind of see how she goes about cooking this up because it is so good, it's so easy to make and we actually use all parts of the fruit itself in making the jam. We don't eat the fruit itself, which is kind of uncommon. Most of the time you're growing it for a fruit of sorts, but in this case, we don't use the fruit as the main ingredients. We are using these red calyces, but we use these fruit for part of the jam making process, which I'll talk about in that video. Some of the other things you might look into with Roselle is they are used in some medical fashions or for um, all natural kind of medicines. I'm not going to talk about those here on the channel just because everyone's different and I would highly suggest for you to do your research on this for some of the medical benefits of this but I also suggest for you to always talk to your doctor before going about using any kind of natural remedies or treatments. But again there are medical benefits to these that have been tested and kind of 
looked into you might look into those for some of the things that you could be going through my dad used it for blood pressure some people use it for blood high blood sugar or diabetics things like that again i'm not a doctor i highly suggest for you to do your research and talk to your doctor before using these in as any part of your treatment but for this video i want to talk about the more edible side of things and the more um, culinary side of things so this plant so let's look into some of those and let's talk a little bit about how you can grow some of this roselle at home and how it grows for me where i live well hello down here i wanted to bring you a little bit closer down to the bottom of the plant so you can kind of see how it grows where i have it growing it is a low branching shrub we grow it as an annual here in north texas because it is not a cold tolerant plant it's from tropical west africa so if you live in warmer climates that don't experience frost these can grow as a perennial shrub but for where we grow it at we grow it as an annual it grows in much the same way as okra does it makes a multi-branch shrub flowers prolifically produces prolifically so let me bring you up a little bit closer and show you some of the flowers and fruits how they form on the plant so the way roselle grows is it forms on these long branching stems here and you'll get these multi-budding parts on the plant so you get multiple buds per leaf section there's a bud forming for every leaf on here so you'll get these buds and oftentimes there will be two of them and what's really cool about this is that one bud will flower as you could possibly see right here one bud flowers and will form a fruit and once you harvest the roselle here so we'd harvest one like this right below it there is another bud ready to form so when i pick these i like to make sure that i can snap them off cleanly off of the plant and leave that other bud behind because it will form a new fruit in its place. Roselle itself is a very prolific plant. I can harvest these about every two to three weeks and during the growing season and they will produce about a shopping bag, a plastic shopping bag full for one, two, three, four, five, six plants. I have six plants here and every two weeks I get a plastic shopping bag full of roselle that need to be processed and harvested. So these are extremely, extremely prolific. They produce a ton. So you can be prepared to have lots of tea and jam and syrup made to use all year round. So let's talk a little bit about some of the other growing features that you need to know about roselle before you start growing it. One thing that you should know about Roselle before you start to grow it is that one, it's very easy to grow, very easy to plant. When we plant them, we start them from seed and I will usually either plant them directly or you can potentially start them in a greenhouse if you have one or on a front porch, but they are sometimes finicky about being transplanted. They do not like their roots disturbed. So if you grow these, make sure they do not become root bound in pots before you plant them and just make sure to try not to disturb the roots as much as you can when you transplant them. So I start the seeds in spring and they grow throughout the summer. And a lot of times when people grow these, they get a little discouraged because they think they're doing something wrong. The plants do not flower or anything like that until fall comes around. They are daylight determinate. So the day length has to start getting short before they start putting out flowers and fruit. So if you grow these and they look like they're making no flowers all summer long, don't fear that's how they grow. They do not start growing until the daylight starts getting shorter. In my case, that's what I've observed anyways. It's around August for me when they start to produce fruit, the end of July, the beginning of August before they start flowering and fruiting and they are super prolific all the way up till frost so right now we're getting ready for our first freezes to start happening so i've been harvesting like crazy making sure i can get all that i can from these before the frost but you can expect a lot a lot of roselle to be produced on just a few plants so to make a small batch of jelly you'll need around about a hundred of these little 
flower or these um, fruits on here. So you can see behind me though, that's not really an issue. These right here have been pretty well picked here recently. So they are starting to flower out again. I hope we can get a few more before the first frost, but just a few plants guys will make more than most people can process in a short period of time. So just understand they're very prolific. They're very easy to grow. If you have nice hot summers, they do really well in that. Pretty much if you can grow okra where you live, you can grow roselle just as easily and you can get a lot of products from that. So I highly suggest for you to give this a try as a crop and try to plant it next spring and maybe by fall next year you will have some roselle that you can turn into teas and jams, things like that. As far as processing roselle for long-term storage, there's a lot of options with this. Like I said, my favorite way is to make jam. And when we make our jam, we can it so it will last up to a year just sitting on a shelf anytime we want to use it. And let me tell you, I've never had to worry about it lasting more than a year because it gets eaten way quicker than a year. It's usually done by early spring and I have to wait all the way till next fall to get more jam for my toast. Some of the other things you can do with it to make your harvest last the longest is if you're wanting to make teas, you can dry these calices down in a dehydrator or just a air, um, let them dry out just in the open air. You can dry these down and you can make tea with these just like you would a dried herbal tea, anything like that. So they can be stored that way. You can make syrups that you can store and can that. You can can those as well and things like that. I have not tried to freeze these. They don't seem like they freeze all that well or they store all that well as a fresh product for very long. I've done them for up for a week in the fridge just while I'm harvesting the calices for a jam. But I would suggest to either dry the calices down for teas or to turn them into another product that you can use as a stable shelf product. So that's really all I have for you on Roselle today. They're very easy to grow. They're absolutely gorgeous as a landscape plant that you can use in a flower bed. They have such awesome features and they're really maintenance free guys. Um, I don't have to worry about them too much as far as pest and disease. Sometimes you get a little bit of aphids on them, but they're very easily washed off. Not really a big issue. So highly encourage you to check out this crop and do a little bit more research on it if you need to. Um, if you have any more questions for me on this, you can leave them down in the comments. I'd be happy to answer any of your questions in that way. If you like this video, be sure to hit that like button. If you've grown Roselle before, let me know in the comments your favorite way to use it and I'd love to hear some other ways of using it other than just like jams, teas, and syrups because I've done those before and they're all absolutely tasty. Would love to hear some more recipes. If you haven't done so yet, be sure to subscribe to the channel if you like what we are putting out on the channel here. And if you haven't done so yet, be sure to check us out on Facebook and Instagram and hit that bell icon for notifications. Till next time, I hope you'll join me right here on The More You Grow.